Do your three yard quilts leave your toes cold? I'm gonna show you seven ways to make your three yard quilts bigger. I think you're gonna to wanna to hear about them. Let's go. In today's video, I am going to teach you seven, I can't do that for some reason, seven different ways to make your three yard quilts bigger. And I'm going to do it using actual three yard quilts. I have made up four three yard quilts. See, I can do that, but for some reason I can't make a seven. Anyway, enough of that. So this is the first three yard quilt that I'm going to use. And as I go through, I'm going to highlight the seven methods, but I'm also gonna ta be talking about quilts, so stay with me. I think you're gonna like what you see. This first quilt is called four patch. You can see why it's called four patch. There's a four patch and then there's another quilt. So there's four, four patches every other row in here. And this is how I chose to make this quilt bigger. Are you ready for this magic? I am going to add a vertical racing stripe. Now I have this one partially already sewn on, but what do you think of that? Isn't that a great solution? And you know, if it's off center, I think it looks a little better being asymmetrical rather than symmetrical. If you wanted to do it down the center, you couldn't do it on this quilt because there's five blocks across. But there's some quilts where people would just put a strip right down the middle and you know what? It, <laughs> it looks to me like there's a strip down the middle and they ran out of fabric or wanted to add fabric. But when you do it asymmetrical, it looks like it has been planned. And in actuality, this one was planned. So the first number one way to make a quilt bigger is to add an asymmetrical racing stripe, a vertical asymmetrical racing stripe. Could you do one this way? You bet. You could do a horizontal or a vertical and I don't think it would matter. Let me see what else I have. I want to talk to you about top or bottom borders and top or bottom borders you could put just a border on the top and a border on the bottom. I learned about top or bottom borders from Tracy at the Sewing Channel. And at first I didn't like them because it was out of my comfort zone and it was different. But the quilt she was putting them on looked stinking cute. How did that work? You know what you could do on this quilt is you could do side borders. But instead of side borders, I made an asymmetrical racing stripe. So number two, so the number two way to make a quilt bigger is to add top or bottom borders. Remember, I did that one time when I made one of Tracy's quilts in her quilt challenge, and it was the scrappy strawberry quilt, and I made a scrappy pumpkin. I love my quilt with the top and the bottom borders. It really adds a lot of fun and a lot of interest to that quilt. So that is a really good solution to use. I'm going to jump ahead to the fourth solution that I have because it's going to look best on this quilt. Have you ever thought of doing an inner border? Hmm, let's talk about that. If I were to do an inner border on this quilt, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hide this. I'm going to hide this one for this discussion. Okay. All right. Now that the racing strip is hidden, let's talk about an inner border. If I were going to do an inner border on this quilt, I would go one block down to here. I would come across here three blocks. I would go down five blocks. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, yes. And I would come across three blocks and then I would go up. So this is the area that I would border. Let me tell you why I chose that area and how I'm going to do it. 
The reason I chose that area is because it's right in the middle and this is where you want symmetry. If you're doing a center border, you don't really want an, an off symmetry border because it would just be, it would be a little different. It would look really modern. This is not a modern quilt. So this is how I would do it. I would look at the blocks that this border is going to replace. And the block in this is eight inches square. So my border is going to have to be half of eight inches, which is four inches. A four inch border is pretty substantial, but it can be done. So I would do a four inch border down this side, a four inch border down this side. And by the way, to start off with, I would just sew these five rows of three together and then add the borders onto that, all right? Now back to that four inch border. The reason I would do the four inch border is because it's half of one of these squares and the square is going to naturally fit on it. You want to make sure your border is going to match your square size. You wouldn't want to have a quilt where your border were here and there was a big space and you put something funky like a three inch strip in the border to, or then, then your outside row of blocks, you would have to put something like a three inch strip. Why make it hard on yourself? Let's not do something like that. Let's go ahead and do a four inch border. So four and four are eight and four and four or eight. So this quilt would increase by eight inches in width and eight inches in height. That's pretty nice. And that's a pretty good addition to the size of a three yard quilt. It might even cover my toes, but definitely not my chin. We're getting there though. Then I would continue sewing these blocks around that inner border. And I would have to add one more block. So when I get my four inch border all the way around and I go to add on this, and I go to add on the top, there's going to need to be one more block. So as you can see, the quilt is going to grow even bigger because that will leave a hole. You'll need to add another block. And what size are our blocks? They're eight inch. This quilt suddenly got very, very big. That's not what I'm gonna do today. I'm going to go ahead and sew this quilt up. I'm gonna take it to the machine sew it up and then I'm going to have some border fun with it. Do you want to join me? So uh, this is the reason why I'm not doing those other options I talked about, the inner border, because I'm out of fabric. And when you're working with a three yard quilt, you have to use three yards or I'm telling you how much in each case I'm adding to it. And this quilt, I added a little bit more. It was like a yard and a quarter to a yard and a half of each of the three yards, but it certainly didn't give me enough to make a inner border. So I thought I would just tell you about it. My plan is to sew the racing stripe on and then use the fabric that I had to finish off this quilt. The racing stripe poses a little bit of a problem and I'm gonna show you how to get by it. And that is matching up. You could still not match your seams, but I'm going to be very careful. So as you can see, here's the edge of the stripe here, and here is the, excuse me, here's the edge of the stripe, and here is the edge of the quilt. I'm gonna pin that on, and I'm going to look right here, and guess what I have right here? I have the seam for the quilt. I can see it, I'm laying it flat. This seam, I'm following this seam across here and it lines up with this seam. So therefore, my seams are going to line up. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom and pin this one on 
And this one, I'm following this seam right down here and it goes right to the seam. So I'm gonna pop in some pins so I can sew this up. Let's make sure that this seam and this seam are on a seam and they are. This is gonna be pretty easy. Just a little tip when you're putting something together with a large amount of sashing or spacing, etc. All I need to do now is press it down and sew my borders on and decide which way I want to put my borders on. And this is what I have. I'm actually, oh, by the way, this was left over from my racing stripe. And I'm actually thinking of putting this piece on first, then the green, then the yellow. Let's audition and see. Hmm. Maybe I should mirror what I've got in the racing stripe and do a border out of that. And I think that's what I should do. But it looks like I should do the yellow strip first. This is kind of messy auditioning, but I can see it well. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to mirror the racing stripe and I'm going to do this border all the way around. Let's get started. Well, what do you think? Do you think it deserves a ta-da? I do. Let's talk about this quilt. Its original size was 48 and a half by 56 and a half, but now, the quilt is 57 wide by 67 long. And the methods that I used to make it bigger was the racing stripe. And then I echoed that in the border to give it a little bit of continuity. And the reason I did this kind of a border and not an inner border was because this is all the fabric I had. So this was about a yard and a third or a yard and a half of each of these pieces of fabric that I had. So you can see with a little planning and with these methods, you can really make your quilts bigger. And, and you don't just have to add blocks. There's more to making a three yard quilt bigger than just adding blocks. And that's what I'm gonna teach you. Let's get on to quilt number two. This next quilt is a quilt called so strippy. I'm hoping you're able to see that. This quilt is 44 by 60. And I don't have all of it up here because I want to just put part of it up and I'm going to explode it. So as you can see, the, the blocks are bordered on one side and then it's put together with a very single thin border all the way around it. Well, I'm going to make it bigger by putting a giant hashtag right down the middle of this quilt. I don't know how it's gonna look. I think it's gonna look different, but it's still going to look good. So let's explode it out. I'm gonna pull this out. Let's see. I'm gonna put that. What I'm going to put in the middle is I had some extra of this fabric and I think that will look really good. 
because it's so cute. Just kind of ignore it there. Now it does something and what it does is blends in with these blocks where the border is that way, but I knew it was going to make a different quilt look and that's okay. Uh, you could actually go in and do this dark blue strip as well. But you know, I think that would be a little bit heavy. This I think is going to give a lot more interest to the quilt. And this is method number three to put in a giant hashtag or you could put a plus sign in a quilt. I think a plus sign would be really cool. This quilt didn't lend itself to it. That's why I did this style. And further, if I were going to put a plus sign in a quilt, my favorite way to do it is not right down the middle on both ways and have four equal quadrants. My favorite way to do it would be to make it off to the side a little bit, maybe a little lower and have four quadrants, but they were all different sizes. I think that would look really cool. It looks quite modern, but it's a really awesome way to put a quilt together. Now, recently, in fact, my last video, I did a quilt. I called it, in fact, it's right here on the long arm, my blue and orange quilt, and I call it Silly Goose. I have two strips on that. I'd like to take it off and show it to you, but it's literally on the long arm and I'm using it as a table here. I had a thick strip down this side and two thin strips down here on the bottom. And I loved the way that looked. I wanted a very modern look and I believe I achieved it. So if you're making something like this, if you want to modern it up a little or zhuzh it up a little bit, go ahead. Who says you have to use the same size of strips in a quilt? It's just going to give interest and like I say, in this case, make it better. So this strip called Sew Strippy is going to get a big old hashtag. I'm gonna take it to the machine and sew it right now. Let's go. I have just finished adding the horizontal tops of the hashtag here and here on the bottom. So this quilt top is lengthened by two inches. What I'm going to do actually, it's lengthened by three inches because this is an inch and a half. What I'm going to do is measure this piece right here and make sure I have enough of these strips to sew another strip on the outside. And then I'll put the quilt back together and give you a look-see. long strips. I'm going to miter them. So I sat on my centerpiece. 
It's a good thing I have a Laura star. To get those, dare I say, butt wrinkles out. That's what I did. I sat on it with my bum. I know you've noticed that I'm not <clears throat> cutting and doing it correctly. Today, what I mean is I know you know that I'm not measuring and cutting my pieces to length. I'm putting them in position without stretching them. I'm just pulling them taut and pinning them. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because I want to be fast. So, plus I am doing this a little bit on the fly. And if I'm on the fly, why not take a little risk, eh? need to take these selvages off. There's one on the other side. And then it's time to put this baby together. What do you think? I think it's an adorable quilt. Of course, the fabric is way, way cute. There's a few obvious mistakes, and I know you're going to see them, so I'm going to point them out. In putting the hashtag on this pattern, I split up the border around the blocks, right here, and here, actually, the border is floating. Now, I could have kept this border here and dropped this down, but one of these ends would certainly be without a border. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with it. It's cute, it's adorable. I'm making these quilts for charity, or I might give them to some little girls that would just absolutely adore them. But I was able to have, I had enough fabric that I was able to put a two and a half inch border of the pink and no, a two inch border of the pink and a two and a half inch border of this print. And I really think the quilt turned out well. I used option, let me look and see. I used option number, or I used method number three the plus sign or the cross. And I also added borders, which is method number six. And I have something to say about borders, but you have to wait till I get there to find out what it is. Oh, this quilt originally was 44 and a half inches by 60 and a half inches. And now with my additions, it is 53 and a half inches by 69 and a half inches. So I added quite a bit. It's really looking good. It's gonna be adorable when I get the borders sewn on, 
but right now I'm going to set it aside and show you quilt number three and talk about the methods that I'm using with that quilt. This quilt is quilt number three. It is actually called Topsy Turvy. And I've made this several times. I love the look of this quilt. And does it need anything else? No, it doesn't. This quilt definitely can stand on its own. And as it stands right now, it's a total three yard quilt. However, I want to make it bigger. So I tried a couple of things. First, I tried using sashing. And you know, there's already sort of, this is a block right here. And there's, a, there's two strips on the horizontal, two strips on the vertical. And on every block, that's how it is, two and two. I laid out the sashing before I sewed the blocks together and I wasn't buying it. It just didn't look good. Even though the sashing I was using was going to be this yellow. You see, I have a yard and a yard and a third, or maybe a yard and a fourth left over of this yellow. And I really wanted to use that extra fabric in the quilt to make it bigger. And I thought it would be cool because as you see, rarely does the yellow touch the edge of the block. But again, it just wasn't working for me. So I dumped the sashing. I'm gonna do that in another quilt. And I decided to go with option number two, which is the option I learned from Tracy at the Sewing Channel. Side borders. So I am going to do two side borders on this quilt, and then I'm going to border the entire quilt with this adorable green monkey print. I have so much of the green monkey print and I think it's going to look really cute to have the side borders out of the yellow in a little bit thicker strip going down each side. That's the option I'm gonna do to make it bigger. And on these green monkeys, they're gonna be wide borders. It's gonna be fun because I really want super wide borders. But you know what I'm thinking about? Little mind is going here. I'm thinking of putting extra wide borders at the top and on the side borders where the yellow is, I'm gonna make those thinner. Because you know what? I think that's how Tracy would do it. And I really want to play with these borders. Besides, I'm just a little tired of doing standard borders. Let's get some border action going here, okay? Okay, quilt number three. Ta-da! I think this one turned out really, really cute. And so far, this is my favorite quilt. But I do have to tell you, I am partial to the topsy-turvy pattern. It's not that hard if you follow the directions. So let me tell you what I did. I did method number two, the side borders. And do you notice they're kind of tiny? Yeah, I didn't really chicken out, but I wanted to have them bordered by the green. And this is obviously much wider. In fact, I cut a six inch swath and I was able to use that on here. And I wanted more of these monkeys to show. I don't know if you can see up close or not, but there's a little vine and these adorable monkeys that are here and here going down the vine. And of course on this one, they're a little off kilter, but you know, I think it turned out just adorable. So a six inch border at the top, a two and a half inch border of the yellow, and this is a solid three and a half inch border sewn together. Cute, 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 cute. I use method number two and method number six, the borders. The borders and the side borders. 
Okay, the two methods that I haven't talked about yet are number five, which is sashing. And remember, I was gonna sash this one and it just didn't work out. Method number five, which is sashing, and method number seven, which is the obvious method. And I'm gonna tell you about that, but you're gonna have to wait till I get the other quilt up, okay? So quilt number four, what do you think? I think it's very, very cute. Now this is a free pattern from So Can She, and of course there's gonna be links below for all four of the patterns that I've used. Do you guys notice how good I'm getting at flipping up those number five, seven, and I couldn't do it at first? <laughs> I've got seven methods, four quilts, quilt number three, <laughs> yes, enough silliness. Anyway, I think this is a really cute quilt. It's just the quarter log cabin, super simple to sew up, but boy, the size is really tiny, isn't it? Now, what she does on her pattern is she's got the rest of the fabric, this didn't quite use a full yard or a full three yards, but the rest of the fabric is three borders. She has a background border first, so that would be this light, and then she has the two colors, and they're quite thin, but you know, it's a beautiful quilt and it looks really good. But how to make this one bigger? What are your thoughts while you're looking at it? Let me show you the very first thing that I tried, and I think it turned out fantastic. I really, really like it. I'm gonna do this up here. Let's see. I'm gonna explode this a little bit. Okay. All right. I think you know what I'm gonna do. And you're probably right. We are going to use sashing. Now this sashing is in the line. It's probably gonna take me a, a full yard to cut all this. And I'm guessing because I haven't cut it all. But let me show you how cute this looks with the right sashing. Hmm, I'm going to use my scissors and cut some of it up. I think that this one definitely is going to require sashing. Whoops. Sorry. Whoops. This is not the most ideal situation. I'm just about to get back into my sewing room, guys. But for now, I'm gonna struggle with my design wall. So standing back and looking at this quilt, oh my, I really, really, really like the sashing. I like the colors that are coming out in it. They're playing off these bees in the dark. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do sashing. But I'm also gonna do something else. And this is it. I am going to make the quilt bigger by adding more blocks. So I'm going to add 10 block or five blocks down. Okay, and five blocks across. And then when I get the sashing in, I think it's just gonna be awesome sauce. I think you're gonna love this quilt, like I love this quilt. Let's see, I don't know if I can squat down this low in front of y'all. I mean, I know I can, but I'm talking about doing it gracefully. My knees don't bend like they used to. 
So you're going to have to imagine that there's another row across the bottom. But can you believe the size of this quilt, how to expand it out? Amazing, isn't it? All I have to say is I'd better get busy because I have a lot of sewing to do. Okay, here I go. The Sashing Queen. <laughs> Well, I think quilt number four is knocking it out of the park. I absolutely love this sashing that adds a little bit of green. Don't you think it is just adorable? Now it doesn't have to be the same three fabrics if you're going to add some extra fabric. And this is what I came up with. The sashing and the little border is going to take about 30 inches of fabric. Then I had an extra yard and a half, so about half a yard of each of the three colors in this quilt. And that's what I made the extra 10 blocks with and the borders. So originally this quilt was 50 by 60 inches. And after my additions, it is 63 by 73 inches. I just have to stand back and look at it because I think it is so adorable. Orange is not one of my favorite colors, but I think it looks great. Someone is going to love this quilt. I want to go over the seven methods that I shared with you in this video. Number one, add an offset vertical racing strip. Number two, add top and bottom borders. Remember, they don't have to be the same on the sides. Number three, add a plus sign or a hashtag. And number four, don't forget you can add inner borders. Just remember that you have to work with the size of the squares that you have or the size of the blocks that you have. And that's going to determine what you're gonna do for those inner borders. Number five, add sashing like I did in this quilt. And number six is borders. Here's the deal with borders. Be creative. You could make borders that were half square triangles or triangles themselves. You can do so many things with borders. You can make them wider. You can make them narrower. It's just fun. You can do so many things with borders. You can make them wider, you can make them narrower, or you can do multiple borders. Remember, there are no rules, and the quilting police, they're out to lunch, if you can find them. And the last method, number seven, add more blocks. I'd like to thank you for tuning into my video today. I really appreciated having you along with me on this project. And if you like what you see, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up, subscribe, or share my videos with your friends. Your comments are fantastic. Keep them coming. You know, this has been such a fun, creative video. I have loved coming up with these ideas and putting it together for you. And I just hope you love the process as much as I loved it and loved making it for you. I would like to say thank you to some viewers right now. Renee Stovall, I appreciate the super thanks. Thank you so much. Then Lindy told me she's heard that those standout blocks, like my orange flying goose in the blue field of geese, are called zingers. I like that name, Lindy. Thanks for bringing it up. Then Alan Anderson. Thank you for watching my videos. And you love the name too. You also said you've never seen a quilt put together like this before. Well, that's just how my mind works. 
I want to thank you for watching my channel. Person2463 and Dixie Donovan both stated they missed the engineer's snarky comments. Well, we were having a bit of a deadline last week, but in this video, I'm sure it's going to be full of snarky comments. And just so you know, I usually never read his snarky comments until it goes live. Sometimes I'm kind of horrified. We're going to wait and see what this one looks like. So I'll have no idea what he says in this one either until the video goes live on YouTube. Then many of you love the name Silly Goose. I did too. And it hit me that this was the standout name for this quilt. So thank you for liking my quilts. Thank you for following my channel. I appreciate you. And if you want to thank me, I would love it if you would subscribe if you don't already. Have a great week. We'll see you on my next video. Bye.